Hi, I'm Jamie Lewis, and welcome back to TheBasis.net. Today, we're gonna talk about something that a lot of us do nowadays called looping. I'm gonna share with you my method for looping, and I'm gonna explain why I choose to do it this way. So don't go anywhere. I guarantee you're gonna to wanna to see this. Now, first of all, let me just apologize really quick about the clickbaitiness title of this video. I don't want you to actually throw away your looper pedal. They're pretty cool, and most of the time, it'll get the job done. It's just that I think there's a much better way to do it, because in my opinion, looper pedals are just too limiting. They don't give you enough control. They put all of the control in one place, which is down at your feet, where you can't manipulate it with your hands. And because of those th two things, it just puts a cap on what you're allowed to do musically with your looping. And by the way, if you don't even know what I'm talking about when I say looping, here's the gist of it. You've been in a bar or a restaurant or somewhere and you've seen someone, usually an acoustic guitar player, do something like this. He starts out by playing a groove of some sort and once he stops playing, all the music that he just performed keeps on playing or looping without him over and over and over again. And then he starts to add layers or loops. Now please hear me correctly on this. I am not knocking this looping technique at all. It's fantastic. If you do it, if you're good at it, my hat's off to you. Keep going. I just think there's a better way to do this. And interestingly, it doesn't involve anything that you probably don't own already. So all that being said, this is my method for looping in live scenarios. And the funny thing is, it doesn't even involve owning a looper pedal to begin with. Actually, I really like to do live looping with a laptop computer and a piece of software called Ableton Live. And the reason why I like doing this is because in every way that a looper pedal falls short, well, this method does the exact opposite. It gives me more control. It puts the control where I can physically see it and reach for it. And it also gives me ways to manipulate my loops and my layers and my music in, in ways that a looper pedal just physically cannot. Let me just show you what it sounds like. And then I'll talk about why I like this method better over a standard looper pedal. And then I'll show you how you can get similar results at home or on the stage yourself. Now, just like that other guy using a looper pedal, let's just start with a really simple groove. I can add some really simple chords to it just like this, but so far, nothing's different from what the other guy was doing. But instead of doing percussion with my bass guitar, let's do it with a drum VST plugin to get a really, really good drum groove. Let's also add in that ostinato pattern. Instead of playing it on the bass, let's use another VST synth plugin for just some tonal variation. Now maybe this ostinato pattern's a bit too loud. That's okay, I'll just bring the volume down on that one channel. Let's go ahead and add in that melody to it as well. Now here's the thing that your looper pedal absolutely cannot do, and that's using plugins to add a layer of production to your performance. I want to add a little bit of reverb to the drums like this, or some delay to that melody line. Well, maybe I want to make it sound like the entire song just went underwater for a bit. Now it's time to solo. Let's just jam around for a little bit and see what happens. Instead of going back to the regular bass groove, I want to do a little bit of reharmonization here. Now I can play different notes underneath the rest of the layers and create a little B section for this too. And when I'm done, maybe I just want to start fading out some of these 
with layers or loops to end the song like this. So that's what it looks like when I do looping in a live performance scenario. So now let's talk about why I think this is a better method over a standard looper pedal. And I think the reasons are quite obvious. You saw what I was able to do with keyboards and with drums and with plugins and EQs and reverbs and all these different effects after my audio had already been recorded. That's something that a looper pedal is not going to allow you to do. Maybe you can do that stuff on the way in, but once it's recorded to be able to balance and mix it, you know, those options are just out the window. And even if your looper pedal could do those things, it puts all the controls at the wrong place, down at your feet. I mean, that's a good spot for turning it on and off while my hands are busy playing bass. But if I wanna go back and change some levels or some volumes or add some effects or do anything, that's a hands-on thing, right? And so that's the cool thing about using a computer in Ableton Live is it allows me to map any of those functions to any number of peripherals that I plug in and I get to choose how I control and interface with my loops. Now, another benefit to looping this way is that everything is tempo locked, meaning every time I start a new loop or end one, it's tethered to the beginning and the ending of the original number of bars that I set out. Or I can set it to be an eight bar loop or a 16 bar loop or whatever I want. But what I don't have to do is worry about you know my loops or my layers drifting apart from one another because I didn't hit that stupid button in time, right? Everything is tempo locked, which is one of the benefits of playing live music to a click. And I've kind of said this already, but I'm the one who gets to choose how I manipulate all these different parameters. So at my feet, I've got buttons that turn on the loops for when I'm playing bass, because obviously my fingers are busy at the moment. So I'll control that stuff with my feet. But as soon as I go over to the keyboard or to the drum pads, right, as soon as I'm doing that kind of stuff, well, I can control the loops with my hands, because why do I need to do it with my feet? So basically, if you're thinking right now, oh, I don't like this idea because I don't want to have to go to a mouse and a keyboard and start typing and you know, have to worry about clicking on the right button at the right time, you actually don't have to do that because in Ableton Live, I can mini map any one of those functions to any button at my fingertips or at my feet. Now, if you want to know how to do this yourself, I'll explain it in brief detail right here. But if you'd like a more in-depth, step-by-step tutorial on, on how to do this, just drop me a message in the comments below. Let me know that you know, that's what you'd like to see, and I'll make it happen in the coming weeks here at thebasis.net. So let me just give you a really quick rundown of how to do this. Now, in a nutshell, here's what you'll need. Number one, a bass guitar and a quarter-inch cable. Chances are, you probably got that already. You'll also need a laptop computer. It doesn't have to be an, an Apple or a Windows. It could be anything. Again, you probably own one of these too. You'll also need some USB cables, and I'm sure you have like 10,000 of these lying around your house. You'll definitely need an audio interface of some sort, and many musicians do a lot of recording from home these days. So again, I'm sure a large number of you actually have this already. And the last thing you'll need is just some sort of recording software like Studio One, Ableton Live, GarageBand. And again, a lot of you like to do your own demoing and recording at home, so you've probably got this already too. Now, if you wanna get fancy, you can add some extra things like a microphone and an XLR cable, maybe some peripheral MIDI controllers like keyboards and drum pads, maybe even a DAW controller with some faders and knobs for manipulating plugins and, and doing some production techniques. Again. This stuff isn't necessary, it's just nice to have for more options. So like I said, you probably have most of this stuff already. So for many of you, you can start looping this way today if you want to. Now, before we wrap things up, let me just answer a couple of really quick questions that you might be thinking right now. The first thing you might be wondering is, what kind of audio interface am I using? In this case, it's a PreSonus Studio 26. And the reason I chose this interface is because Personas makes great stuff. This is a really rugged, decent audio interface, and it happens to be USB bus powered. So what does that mean? It doesn't require a power supply. And that's really cool, because if you're gonna put this on your pedal board, which is where I keep it, um, those power supply pedal uh, slots are valuable, valuable real estate. So you don't have to unplug one of your pedals or make room for it. It'll just power off of your laptop. And I'll bet one of the other things you're wondering is, will there be any latency by looping this way? And the answer is yes and no. Anytime you plug into something digital, there's gonna be latency because a conversion process has to happen. It's taking your analog sound and turning it into zeros and ones. So that takes time. And then it has to convert those zeros and ones 
back into analog sound that's coming from your speakers. So that is called latency. However, when I was looping just now, I didn't experience any latency, and here's the reason why. I turned off software monitoring in Ableton. So meaning, when I played, the only sound I was hearing was coming from my amplifier. The, the, the sound that I was hearing coming out of Ableton was just playback. But I don't have to worry about playback because I'm not playing, there's, there's no latency at that point. So in order to do that, you have to have either an effects loop pedal or have an effects loop on your amp and then just turn off the software monitoring. Again, I know that's probably a bit confusing to those of you who don't record and don't know much about computer audio. So if I lost you and you really wanna know what I'm talking about, just leave me a comment. Let me know that that's a video that you would like to learn about and, and I'll make it happen. But for now, just know that is there latency? Yes, but do you need to play with any latency? No, there's definitely a way around it. And the last thing you might be wondering is how many layers or how many loops can I create if, if I use it this way? Because on a pedal, you might just have one loop or you could do two different ones and overdub in different ways. So how many can you do with a laptop in Ableton Live? Well, as many as your computer can handle. In the example you heard me do just now, there were five layers. There was one for a bass line, one for some chords, a drum groove, the ostinato pattern on the keys, and a melody. But I could have kept going because my laptop's pretty powerful. So really, you're only limited to how much power you have on your computer. So that's how I do looping in a live performance scenario. I know it's not for everyone, but I happen to think it's really cool. And it's a great way to do solo performances. So again, if you want to know more, if you want me to go into detail and give you the step-by-step -step and get really nerdy and really technical with it, if enough of you leave me a comment below, I'll make it happen, I promise. If you enjoyed this video, please like it by giving it a thumbs up. That's gonna improve the rankings so that more people will see it and more people will be able to learn from it. And if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel also. That way, you'll get notified right when the next video goes live. And also be sure to go visit thebassist.net. You might wanna check out the interview that I just did with Evan Marion, or maybe even the podcast that just went live last week with Stefan Hovsepian from Johnny Lang's band. Or maybe you just wanna check out thousands of premium bass lessons in the members section. So anyways, thanks so much for stopping by, and I'll see you next time here at thebassist.net.